Here's a question. Say you have two spaceships, identical, side by side, connected by a string in outer space. Then at the same moment, both pilots identically accelerate. They get going so fast, they get close to the speed of light. My question to you is, what happens to the string connecting those ships? Will it stay intact or will it snap? I know Arya knows the answer. She has a lot of processing power from somewhere. I don't know. But I want you to really think about the answer for a second. Just take a second. So how about that space weather? Yeah, the solar wind is really nice. It is. It really is. OK, do you have an answer? Good, me too. But I guarantee mine is a lot more complicated. Now entering the facility. If two identical spaceships accelerated identically connected by a string to relativistic speeds, you would see them blast off into the cosmos. And then, at some point, the string would snap. This presents a paradox, Bell's paradox, in fact. There is no apparent reason for the string snapping. There's no apparent force on it. It's as though the ships are getting further and further apart as they travel, but we see them staying the same distance apart. What is going on here? Well, to answer that question fully, we have to get basic. Like, even more basic than a North Face jacket and Ugg boots. You know who you are. Basic, like space time. Where are you right now? You're probably at home, which resides within a country, I'm willing to bet, which is on a planet called Earth, I'm just guessing, which is in the Milky Way galaxy, hmm, and maybe within the observable universe. Call it a hunch. But how would you show me where you are in space time? Well, let's graph it using what's called a Minkowski diagram. So let's have two axes, y and x. On the y axis, we have time, and on the x-axis, we have space. Now, if you were to graph my position right now in space-time, from my perspective, I'm not moving, so I would appear as a vertical line. I'm not changing in space, I'm only changing as time goes towards the future, up and up. If I started moving at some constant velocity, my line would shift to look something like this. These are called my world lines, or possible world lines. They describe where I can be in space-time. But of course, I can't go anywhere in space-time because there's a hard limit on how fast I can go, the speed of light. If we add that limit to our diagram, say a dotted line at 45 degrees to make it easy, we now have a light cone that acts as a boundary for all my possible world lines. This defines every place every Kyle could possibly be, past, present, and future. Now, without getting too complicated, if you were to start moving really, really fast and approach the speed of light, your space-time in these diagrams would warp to accommodate the unchangeability of the speed of light in all reference frames. And this warping is actually the key to solving this paradox. Wait, what? Kevin, did you, did you fix the locking mechanism on this thing? Yes, Aria, I'm not moving. Very funny. There we go. Hey! Guess who's feeding the snake to pusses for a month? Take a wild guess, Kevin. When I'm not moving, you and I will observe the same thing. Nothing weird going on. But once my facility hyperrail starts approaching light speed, our observation of each other will start to diverge. From your perspective, I will begin to slow down. If you were to look at my watch, it would be ticking more slowly than your watch. And from my perspective, you look all sped up and totally ridiculous. You see, changing space-time adds a relativity to perspectives. As mind-blowing as all of Einstein's ideas are, this simple fact underpins it all. Now, Arya, could you desell this thing with inertial compensation this time? Thank you. The custodial staff really doesn't like the cleanup. Oh, you mean that time I stopped so quickly that their bodies basically... Yes. Yes, that's what I mean. Shh. Yes. Relativity and disagreements about what now means between observers moving differently, like our watches reading different times, brings us back to our space-time diagrams and the paradox. I have a shiny new toy, as does Arya here. I'm absolutely snatched. She totally is. So we have a normal non-relativistic space-time diagram. Now let's add the world lines of our two ships accelerating. They are curved lines because they are accelerating. Now notice from our perspective, the ships in their travels are always the same distance apart. The paradox strikes again. 
If they're always the same distance apart, how could a string possibly snap, you say? Well, let's dive in. Into my fresh to death monitor. Right now, we see the ships from our perspective, but what do the ships see when they look at each other? Relativity, as we discussed, could make their views very different. Well, when we do the math for how the first ship's space-time would shift at a relativistic speed, we find a new space-time envelope. If you then ask the first ship to observe where the second ship was at some time they agreed on, the next spot on the world line of the second ship where it meets with the space-time of the first isn't at that equal distance anymore. It's way up here. Shortly after launch, the pilots of these spaceships would report to an outside observer that they were moving further and further apart from each other at different speeds. And of course, this increasing separation would put some force on the string, eventually snapping it. Paradox solved. Oh, nice. Or is it? Come on, I was moving the thing. Is the length of our string really what we're showing with our fancy space-time diagram? Or is that also relative? Don't feel bad if you didn't initially get the right answer to this paradox. Reportedly, the guy who thought up this Gedanken experiment posed it to a number of his colleagues at CERN, to some of the smartest people in the world, and most of them got it wrong too. Scientists themselves, they will tell you, they might in fact be one of the easiest groups of people to fool because they rely so heavily and unthinkingly sometimes on their expertise. Heck, one guy fooled all of paleontology into thinking he had found the missing link and they didn't figure out he was a fraud for 40 years. You are all human and you always have to stay vigilant for any unintuitive trickiness. And especially... Wait. Wait. Where am I? This is totally fine. I definitely know... I definitely know where I'm going. I take a left at... Wait, how can a street intersect with itself? Now we're on to something. Now, yep, now we're on to something. Another sushi place? Here we go, here we go. Did you get lost again? Yeah, well, I was ensconced in thought. Yes. Come on. Just let me in, please. The warping of space-time is weird, and our diagrams imply there should be some weird warping and stretching of the string as well, but this isn't true, and this is where I find a lot of common misunderstanding about how relativity works. There is no physical change to an object when it gets really, really close to the speed of light. If I were to blast off from your perspective, yes, I would slow down and even contract, but if you asked me what I was observing, everything's totally normal. You see, the transformations that you learn about in physics class are just relativistic pictures, a way for the universe to translate the space-time of one observer into the language of another. So we have our paradox again. Two ships identical, accelerating identically to near light speed connected by a string. After they accelerate, they will report each other moving away at different speeds and the stress snaps the string. At no point is there any physical change to the pilots, to the ships, or who's flying that other ship, or to the length of the string. It is always the same length, it has to be, it just breaks because there's in effect two spaceships fighting over it. All of this, even though it seems impossible for this to happen from an outside perspective. Paradox solved. Or is it? Oh, come on. JK. Simmons, here's another way to think about this whole situation without all of the fancy space-time diagrams. So imagine two ships again, but this time they are moving away from you. As we move away from you, who is flying that other ship? As we move away from you, we should get smaller and smaller from your perspective, right? We have to. If the ships were going further away from you and stayed the same distance apart the whole time, that wouldn't be possible unless they were moving apart from each other as they did so. Similarly, the only way the spaceships in our paradox can remain the same distance apart during travel as space-time warps is for them to actually separate in a different frame of reference, relatively speaking. Paradox solved for realsies. Until next time. The space weather is nice today, though. That solar wind, mmm. Ooh, UVA and be up here, baby.
Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in creating this video. Today, I especially want to recognize research assistant Belzada, destroyer of Blarkon 5. That's not his real name. I don't know if you can tell that. And visiting scholar Clayton Odom. If you want to join the facility, if you want to join our Patreon and our Discord, where right now over a thousand nerds are giving me episode ideas, sharing pictures of their cats, talking directly with me, organizing their own trivia nights, you can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and get on the staff today. And if you get your name on Aria here each week, that means you are really supporting the facility and I cannot thank you enough. There's more and more of you each week and I don't know how to pass the... A lot of these Gedanken experiments assume that you can just travel at the speed of light or close to it. Wouldn't it be cool if you had a light speed spaceship? Well, yes, but there's space is not a perfect void like my heart. It, there's still particles in it like hydrogen. And if you were to go close to the speed of light, even in space, you'd hit enough of these particles with enough energy that it would effectively irradiate you and you would be uh, fatally irradiated which is fun to say, in under a second, which is not fun to have happen to you. Oh, still more names. Okay, cool. Thank you. Cool. Cool, cool. Thanks for watching.